Okay, well, welcome students. Uh, it's time for class to begin. If you will all take your seats, we will get started. Uh, no, there's no assigned seats. You can sit wherever you want to. Uh, we just ask that you maintain social distancing, which shouldn't be hard since we're all in different buildings. Can everyone see and hear me okay? I realize that some of you are very far away, uh, so I'll try to speak up so that you can hear me. I know Hawaii is quite a distance away. Welcome to Topical Collecting 101. I am Jennifer Miller, the Executive Director of the American Topical Association. I'm happy that you have chosen to be here with me on this extra special day. It's my birthday. Since we are returning from an extended uh, spring break, uh, summer break, uh, just a break in general, we will brush up on some basics as well as introduce some new material. I hope that I can expand your knowledge or at least increase your interest of topical collecting. Everyone's favorite day in school started with the teacher saying, today we are watching a film. So I thought we could start the same way. Um, lights? Oh no, my film broke. Well, I guess we're gonna have to go old school today. All right, so the textbook that we will be using for this class is called Topical Adventures. It's a brand new book that was published by the American Topical Association this year. You may purchase it online at americantopical.org. It will cover all the material we discuss here today, plus a whole lot more. First of all, what is topical collecting? Traditional philatelists typically collect stamps and philatelic items based on the country or a time period. Topical collecting is based on the images on the stamp. For example, what topics do you see here? Maybe aviation, bridges, ships, San Francisco, clouds, mountains, or cityscapes. Many different topics can be on one single stamp. Why topical collecting? Well, if we turn in our textbooks to page 23, there's a section written by Jack Denis, the 2014 recipient of the Distinguished Topical Philatelist Award. And he writes, beginning collectors may be attracted to the colorful designs and affordability of many topical stamps. And many remain with topicals because they enjoy learning about the person, place, animal, or event pictured on the stamp. Traditional collectors sometimes turn to topical philately when they have completed their collection or when they can no longer afford the stamps they don't have, or when they want to change a pace they come to cherish the, phil the philatelic fun of topical collecting. Keyword is fun. You may be interested in topicals because of the freedom they offer. There's no printed album pages to fill, no burden of needing to complete a collection, no restrictions on how to arrange your collection. You are free to do it any way that you choose. There is only one rule in topical collecting. There are no rules. That is great for the rebels in the crowd. Wait, there might be one rule, and that rule is you should have fun. Isn't that the reason you have a hobby is for fun? So how do I get started in topical collecting? The first step would be to choose your topic. Now, this might be the easiest step or it might be the hardest. American Topical Association members collect over 1,500 different topics, from atticuses to zoos. This might seem overwhelming. There are popular topics including space, Disney, maps, cats, 
artists, scouts, and butterflies. There are also some more unusual topics, like cigars, laundry, brooms, zombies, or even cockroaches. Yes, there was an entire exhibit done on cockroaches. So if you need some help deciding, here are some things that you can think about. Where were you born? Places you've lived? Places you visited or would like to visit? Something related to your career? I have a few coffee stamps in my collection. Uh, perhaps your favorite holiday? We have a huge Christmas uh, study unit. Your favorite food? Yes, I also collect potatoes. Um, other hobbies that you have, stamps with knitting, pottery, gardening. You could um, have fruits and vegetables, or maybe stamps about stamp collecting, or stamps on stamps. Another thing to consider would be the size of your desired collection. Some topics are very broad with thousands of stamps. Uh, for example, the last I checked, butterflies, there were 10,119 different stamps with butterflies on them. If you want something a little more manageable, a little smaller, uh, you could choose a smaller uh, topic like cheese. It only has 71 stamps. Uh, a frequent question is topical versus thematic. How, how is thematic different from topical? Well, topical all depict the topic. For example, my topic is sheep. So this stamp right here has a sheep on it. That is a topical stamp. Um, however, I also have some thematic stamps and they help tell the story of sheep. They have shearing, carding, spinning, and knitting. These are all related to sheep, but they don't necessarily have a sheep on the stamp. It just helps tell the story. I could also include stamps that have uh, dogs or um, shepherds or products made from wool, for example. So you've chosen your topic, now what? Well, at this point, I would highly recommend that you join the American Topical Association if you aren't a member already. You are, then you would be able to take advantage of all the topical collecting resources we offer for our members. After you've joined, you may purchase a checklist of your topic. If we don't have a list, we can create you a custom list. This will help you in many ways as you begin acquiring the items for your collection. One, the checklist will give you an idea of the expanse of the topic. Is it a one page checklist? or is it a 50 page checklist? It will also give you information useful for purchasing your item. It will give you the, the type of item it is, the country, the date of issue, the denomination, the Scott number, and a description. And it will also give you a listing of what you already have versus what you need. How many of you have gone to the, a stamp show and purchased the same, the same stamp multiple times? You purchase a checklist only once. As long as you are an ATA member, you may request free updates emailed to you every year. You will always be up to date. You have a few decisions to make before you start shopping. What condition of stamps will you purchase? You will hear terms like mint, uncanceled, hinged, canceled, CTO, Let's talk about some of these and what they mean. Do you want mint or used? Mint or unused. Because of this, they often cost more uh, than used, but they have a clean image of the stamp topic. Used stamps generally cost less. They are also usually canceled. Cancels can obscure the image, but they can also add historical information and context to the stamp. Some cancels tell wonderful stories. Sometimes used stamps are not canceled, but you can tell they are used because they have no gum on the back. There are mint stamps with no gum, but that's a longer discussion. 
if you choose mint stamps, another decision would be if you want hinged or non-hinged stamps. Hinged stamps are stamps that have been previously placed on an album page with a hinge. You can see the little mark of the hinge right there. They generally cost less, and the front of the stamp is usually just as good in it as an unhinged stamp. Another decision relates to CTOs, or cancel to orders. Um, and they refer to stamps that actually were never intended for postage. These stamps are printed with the cancellation already on the stamps. Some collectors debate whether these are really stamps at all. But remember our one rule, have fun. If you like the stamp, add it to your collection. What type of items do you want to collect? Most collectors start with stamps, but there is so much more than stamps. There are souvenir sheets. This one, this, the sheep isn't even on the stamp, it's on the sheet itself. There's postal stationery. First day covers. There are souvenir covers that are issued in conjunction with an event. In this case, this was for StampX 86, uh, which also could be a first day cover, and then postmarks related to your topic. There's postal history. Sometimes you even get lucky enough to have the letter inside. There are postcards, and then with postcards, do you want blank postcards, or do you mind if there's writing on the back? And there are Cinderella's, which are technically not stamps. Uh, they look like stamps. They're things like Christmas seals and things like that. There are also revenue stamps. These were used to pay taxes on items. There are many different types of revenue stamps. One of the most common topics depicted on a revenue stamp is a battleship. Fun fact, these stamps were designed to tax potatoes but the tax was repealed before they were ever put to use. So they don't have a potato on them, but they are in my potato collection. You can also collect original stamp design artwork or artwork based on stamps. There are just too many options to list them all. So you've chosen your topic, you have your checklist, and you have an idea of what you are looking for. It's time for shopping and swapping. This is the fun part. There are topical dealers and traditional dealers. And let's talk about the difference. With topical dealers, they actually store their inventory based on topics. So you could call them up and ask for your specific topic. Um, you might need to ask for related topics. Like for example, I have, sometimes have to ask for farm animals as opposed to just strictly sheep. With traditional dealers, they store their inventory based on the country. Most online sales platforms operate this way too. Um, they're uh, listed by country in Scott number. This is where your checklist really comes in handy because you have your Scott number for everything so you can ask for a specific Scott number, um, country and Scott number. You can always check out the dealers who support the ATA by advertising in topical time. Any of these would be more than happy to help you work on your collection. Not to take anything away from our super supportive dealers, but another option for acquiring stamps is swapping. This is a great way to use social media to build a collection, especially if your topic has some hard to find modern issues. By far the best online resource is Instagram. A quick search last night turned up over 50,000 posts of collectors around the world looking to swap stamps. Naturally, you have to be careful. There are cheaters everywhere, but start by following a few 
um, other collectors and then approach the topic with someone who posts regularly, especially those who post pictures of what they have sent and received in swaps with other collectors. Don't start with any high value stamps, but make a post with what you have to offer and what you're hoping to get. You'll be amazed at the friends you can make all over the world. Think of it as a modern technology pen pal. And now you have this wonderful pile of goodies. Here is the eternal question. What do I do with all of my stuff? This picture really isn't a bad start. At least it's all in boxes and not spread out all over the dining room table. How many of you currently have a dining room table covered in philatelic items? It gets cleared off for Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner, and then is covered again by the first week of January. So let's start by organizing our collection. Jack Congrove, a winner of the 2020 Distinguished Topical Philatelist Award says it best. It is fine to have packets and boxes full of stamps and covers. We all have that. But if you wish to fully enjoy your collection, you do not want to spend lots of time searching for an item, either to examine it yourself or to show it to someone else. So the simplest way to store your stamps is to put them in glassine envelopes and store them in a box to keep them protected out of light and humidity. So do not put them in the attic or the garage and do not take them with you if you get sent to the doghouse. You can label the glassines with a permanent marker before inserting the stamps. You can simply list the topic if you collect many topics or you may list the country, date, and Scott number if you'd like. There are also sleeves you can purchase to store your covers and postcards to protect them. This is a good way to start sorting a collection that you inherited. Many older collections are traditional collections and albums by country. You can sort them into topics if you're a topical collector. If you like to look at your collection and show it off to others, the best way to do that is in an album of some sort. There are many options for doing this. A stock book is an easy option to store your stamps on a more temporary basis. The stamps can be moved around as you add to your collection. This is a good way to plan your organization for a more permanent album. There's nothing wrong with storing items in a stock book. You have to be careful that things don't fall out. Uh, it is also challenging to label the items. You can include pieces of paper with the information on it and poke them in the little pockets. The type of album you will use will depend on the condition of your stamps. If you collect used stamps, it's not a problem to use hinges on them when, cre when creating an album. ATA has several album pages that you can download from the website. These display the topic, but leave the rest of the page for you to place the stamps as you wish. There's a nice grid on the page. You can write the information right next to the stamp on the page. You can use a punch and put the page in a three ring binder. However, I recommend putting the sheet in a sheet protector that, uh, that goes into the binder. This will keep your stamps from falling off of the page or getting loose. However, if you have expensive mint stamps, you will want to use tongs and you will not want to use this method of storage for your stamps. Another method that you can use for your album is to store the items in plastic stock pages like Vario pages. This method is more expensive and a bit more restrictive. There are several styles of these pages with varying depths of the pockets. There are also sheets that will hold covers and anything up to letter size. You will have to have several different sizes since stamp size varies so much. But with this method, you do not need to purchase mounts. This saves time and frustration when making your album. I do not like cutting mounts, so I have this kind of album. These are archival, so this can be your permanent album. You can insert cards in the pockets listing the information you wish to know about the stamps next to it, as you see I've done there. The albums become rather heavy once they contain several pages, so be sure to purchase high quality binders. My binders have a pocket on the front and on the side on the spine so that I can write on them what so I can label them and you'll end up with many binders. And look, this stamp right here was released on my birthday. Oh, this guy. Most commercial albums you find are arranged by country. 
However, there are some topical albums or pages available for purchase. Scott, purchased, uh, Scott produces one on trains, and Paolo also produces some premium topical albums. There's two examples there. But most topicalists decide to make their own albums. Back in the day, collectors created this, these pages manually by drawing the frame outline and lettering the captions by text, by hand, or by typewriter. Today, there are many computer applications that can help you make your customized album pages that look like they were done by professional printers. Some of these include Adobe InDesign, Microsoft Publisher, and even Microsoft Word. If you are making your own pages, make sure that you purchase a good weight paper, 30 pound or above. Also, make sure that it is archival quality, acid free and lignin free. You may use eight and a half by 11 pages, or you may use scrapbook size pages. The, co the color of the paper is simply your preference. With this type of album, you will want to use mounts instead of hinges. These protect the stamp without damaging the gum. Some, cut pre, some come pre-cut to size, others come in strips, and you have to cut them yourself. As far as determining how to design your pages, that is completely up to you. It is your album. You can make it any way that you want. Here's a few examples for you. Here's one for butterflies and for Christopher Columbus. Notice the Columbus one is actually on blue paper. And then here's one for United Nations. And the fire service, one, they put fun little pictures um, around the side, which I thought was pretty neat. And they used the red trim instead of using black. So some fun variations there. Now class, we have covered a lot of material in today's lesson. What I want you to remember is that topical collecting is about the adventure and above all should be fun. With topicals, we are collecting miniature works of art that remind us of things that bring us joy. Since this is the 101 class in topicals, there's much I have not covered. I trust you have been following along in our text, Topical Adventures. If not, make sure and purchase your copy because tonight's assignment is to read pages one to 192. And yes, there will be a pop quiz tomorrow. This will reinforce our materials from today and introduce you to more advanced topics like stamp catalogs, valuation, and the fascinating world of competitive exhibiting. We have just a few minutes left before the bell rings. Are there any questions before we are dismissed? Jennifer?